in the past, you have called for the jailing of CEOs and climate change skeptics. We've got a clip from 2014 of you. Um, let's run that clip. And then could you explain what was your thinking and whether or not it's changed since then? Sure. Be in jail. I think they should be enjoying three hots and a cot at The Hague with all the other war criminals who are there. What about politicians, uh, people who deny, who express skepticism? They're them. selling out the public trust. And, you know, I think those guys who are doing the, the Koch brothers bidding and who are against all the evidence of the rational mind are saying that global warming doesn't exist, that they are contemptible human beings, and that, you know, I wish that there were a law you could punish them under. I don't think there's a, war, a law that you can punish those politicians under, but I, do I think the Koch brothers should be prosecuted for reckless endangerment? Absolutely. That's a criminal offense, and they ought to be serving time for it. All right. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate okay. it. Okay. Um, do you still feel that way? Obviously, we're down one Koch brother. You, yeah, you got to. Um, you have to look at the the earlier part of that clip, which you didn't show. Okay. It shows that I was being asked a question about their criminal uh, conduct. The Coke Energy at that time was, I think, it was the third or fourth largest air polluter in the world. It was maintaining pet coke piles in Detroit and Chicago that were poisoning uh, poor neighborhoods. It was it was the the uh, it had been criminally convicted of violating environmental, which means it did it knowingly in order to make money. And what I say earlier on the clip, I say if a you know if a black kid steals ten dollars from a grocery store, he'd go to jail. But why shouldn't the Koch brothers be going to jail? If they're selling, if they're stealing hundreds of millions of dollars, which was from do you, what they were so doing. do you think people who well, uh, I'll, yeah. let me finish that because I do I I have said that um, that companies that certain certain or certain uh, entities corporate entities that habitually violate the law or whose purpose is to injure the public um, uh, public wheel, the public interest, those corporations should be subject to the corporate death penalty. And what that means is there's a, there's a um, you know, the corporations are licensed by the states, but most of the states require that, that the corporation, in order to get a charter, and it operate in the public interest. And if it departs from the public interest, in other words, if it's completely consumed by private interest that is actually damaging the public interest, it, the states, the Secretary of State and the Attorney General have the capacity in various states to yank that charter in every state. You know, somebody has the ability to yank that charter. For example, in New York State, in the 1990s, um, the uh, Republican Attorney General uh, uh, liquidated the Tobacco Institute. The Tobacco Institute was an institute that was created by the tobacco, by Philip Morris and the other tobacco companies. Those companies knew for 60 years that their product was killing one out of every four of their customers who used the product as directed, but they were lying to the public about it and they were creating. Right. Hey, look, let me finish this because this is important for people to know, you know, because I've been accused of this before. They were, the Tobacco Institute was created to deceive the public about the dangers of tobacco. And it was, it was given the corporate death penalty in New York and its assets were then distributed. So uh, the Koch brothers at that time were funding a series of think tanks that were designed to hide pollution, to, to minimize pollution, to do things that were, um, that were dangerous to the public and that were fraudulent. Do you think that's first, still the case? The First Amendment does not protect the, the First Amendment does not protect fraudulent speech. If you're if you say something that is fraudulent, you're not protected. So and I do believe that people who do that should be punished. Now, at the time I made that, the Exxon Corporation had secret documents which we had obtained that showed that. Exxon scientists have been informing the company that their scientists knew more, Brad boasted that they knew more about the fate of the carbon molecule 
than any other scientist in the world. And those scientists had concluded that global warming was real, that it was going to destroy the Arctic, melt the Arctic. And they wrote memos to the, uh, to the senior staff at Exxon saying, we, if we keep doing what we're doing, we are going to melt the Arctic. And that will be a bad thing for humanity. It will be a good thing for our company because there's a lot of oil under the Arctic and we can get at it. So that was the information that I was dealing with at that time, and you know, which was almost a perfect analogy for what the Tobacco Institute. So, I mean, but do you think that you know? Do you think that uh, you know organizations that receive funding from uh, you know the Koch brother at this point should be uh, should be given the corporate death penalty? No, of course. You, okay, of so. Course not. And is it is it any less chilling of speech? Uh, you know, you were we were talking about hate. Back, back then, I didn't believe that. I believe that. Well, you just said that you were that the whole, that it's the same thing as the Tobacco Institute. So yeah, if they, if they given if they if they were given if they if they if the organization if the purpose of that organization was to deceive the public, and then yeah, they should. Uh, they, we Do we should, want to, I mean, I, I guess just, you know, on this question of free speech, uh, you know, do we want people in positions of power to be deciding what is acceptable speech, that this is misinformation or malinformation or disinformation? Um, it just seems like that way madness lies because the government will always come up with a pretext for saying your speech is not just wrong, it's criminal and you need to be shut down. Well, we have, I don't know, but I do believe that prosecutors and judges make decisions about what's fraud all the time. And, you know, we, and we want to preserve that. And nobody ever says that that is a, uh, you know, that that's an, an inhibition of free speech. Fraud you know, what, speech. What, I see, what I see when I look at that clip and think of the debate, especially in the 2010s around climate change, is I see a lot of parallels with the COVID debate in the 2020s, because both climate change and COVID are real and they carry risks to humans, but the reality of those risks and trade-offs can be more nuanced than just saying, you know, just trust the science or the science is settled. Yeah. And a lot of those who wanted to have a debate over the policy agenda embedded in the climate change discourse or the COVID discourse were suppressed, deplatformed, called deniers, even called to be criminalized or asked that I wish there were laws to criminalize this kind of speech. Do you regret partaking in that kind of discourse after kind of going through this during, in the COVID era? Yeah, I, and I think you make a good point. And having seen what happened in the COVID era, if I had known that back then, I, I probably would not have made that speech. And also I, I see, or, you know, made that statement. Um, but I've also seen, you know, in recent years, how the, you know, the, how the crises of COVID was manipulated and, uh, and exploited by powerful interests to clamp down totalitarian controls and to, um, and to you know, impose uh, technologies on people that, uh, that were making them profits for which they own the IPs. And I'm seeing a lot of that now with, uh, in the carbon era, I'm seeing, you know, the, the, this emphasis on geoengineering, which I think is very damaging to the environment. I'm seeing what's happening to the whales off the East coast of North America. Um, and, you know, something that I fought very long for, for 30 years to, of putting those uh, wind turbines out there. We have a lot of wind on land in this country and we shouldn't be turning the oceans into industrialized zones and destroying the whales. Oh, there's a lot of things that I know now that I, you know, that I think the issue is more complex today than it, uh, than it seemingly was at that point. That was an excerpt from the Reason interview with Robert F. Kennedy Jr., who's running for president. If you want to see another excerpt, go here. If you want to see the full thing, and you should go here. Come back next Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern time when Zach Weismiller and I will be talking to somebody that you absolutely want to hear from.